Hi, it's Ian, and welcome back to my 30 days of Taiko skills. Today is day 12, and I'm talking about Shime Daiko. So, most Taiko players know that Shime Daiko is a rope tightened drum. The word Shimeru in Japanese means to tighten, and that's a contrast of a drum that you tighten、um, versus the kind of Taiko that are tacked, the Byo Uchi Taiko, that、um, once you have it, you can't really do anything. Unless you take the tacks out and then re pull it,、uh, it's a whole involved process. So, the shime daiko you can always、uh, tighten and loosen as needed、uh, in contrast. So, in fact, the shime daiko category can be any size, starting from this small size or even smaller, like a kotsuzumi, to all the way up to what might be considered a ojime daiko or o daiko size.、Um, and everything in between. If it's rope tightened, then technically it's in that category of shime daiko. However, most people, when they say shime daiko or hear shime daiko, are thinking about this size, smaller size drum. And、uh, I have a few different ones to talk about today. The first one is the hogaku, which is the、uh, Japanese classical music,、uh, Japanese classical percussion taiko. And this is a drum that you would see if you went to a no play.、Um, they might bring it out at certain parts of the play and、um, play this drum. You might also hear it in、uh, the side room during a kabuki performance, or you might see it in other settings where Japanese、um, traditional classical music is utilized. So it's the lightest of, of all the shime daiko that. that、uh, Of this size that we're talking about. Light means the body is shallow and thin. The metal rings that the heads are、uh, sewn onto are thin, and the rope also is thin, and the hide or the skin is also、uh, some of the thinnest. So it makes us the, the lightest possible、uh, of this category.、Um, it's true with this Shime Daiko as well as other ones that there is a playing side. And a resonance side in general. So the playing side always has thicker skin, and this one,、uh, this type of drum usually has this leather patch on the playing side, so it's very easy to tell. If this was missing, you could always just tap it, and, and you could hear that the thicker side is always lower pitched. You could probably also feel it、um, just by pushing on it or feel the, the spots where, where the skin is. Uh, sticking out underneath, and you could probably feel the thickness. So,、uh, in general, we're always trying to play the thicker side because it's going to give us more resonance and a better sound. The thin side is supposed to be thinner,、uh, the back side is the resonant side, and the thinness allows it to、uh, resonate when you hit the other side. So, that's a good general rule to, to know about.、Uh, this Hogaku style Shime Daiko also has a different kind of tightening system or a rope system. It's,、uh, there's two actually two separate ropes involved instead of the other ones I'll show you. It's usually one long rope that, that we tie. So the, the second rope is completely separate. So the first stage of tightening this is this tate, and typically we just use our hands.、Uh, it doesn't take that much, that much tension to, to tighten these lighter drums. So We don't usually use、uh, something like a agebachi or some kind of a leverage tool. Usually we just use our hands to pull this. And once that's tight, tie that off, and then we get the second、uh, rope. So this first one is called tate, which means vertical. And the second one is the, the yoko rope or the horizontal rope. So we go around and tie this separately going around this way. So this style drum typically does not interlace. Uh, like the other drums that we're talking about,、uh, typically just go around and then pull and then tighten it off. So it's considerably faster、uh, to tighten than the other, other style. And、um, it also has a very different sound than, than the bigger drums. So、uh, I like using it in certain contexts quite a bit, actually. It sounds quite good, especially for softer playing. If I'm using brushes or mallets or, or trying to play in a softer context, I think it sounds. Extremely good in that kind of、uh, musical situation.
This drum here is something that's much more typical in uh, taiko ensemble that you would see. Um, so this this one is uh, the other style that has quite a bit bigger, thicker skins, bigger rings, bigger rope. And regarding the rope, um, I have a whole blog post dedicated to talking about different types of rope that are appropriate for shime daiko. Um, I think what we're trying to do with with uh, tightening shime daiko is trying to get the best performance out of the rope, and that means getting full control. And uh, full control means that it does not stretch because once we tighten it, we don't want it to start changing uh, sound as soon as we tighten it and start playing on it. The rope stretching will, um, all rope will sort of stretch a little bit as well as the skins will stretch after tightening a little bit, but we want to minimize that so we have the full control. Um, and trying to tighten it to the degree that we like it, and we don't want that stretch variable being introduced because it, it uh, is not ideal. The other thing that we need is for it to not slip when we tie knots. So uh, a lot of rope, uh, synthetic rope that is, is quite slippery and it depends on, on uh, the material and how it's made, of course, but, but um, of course the tr traditional materials that are either hemp or things like manila, those, uh, those traditional ropes are very, very good at not slipping. They, they hold a knot and they keep it there. So again, with the knots, we want control. If we put a knot there and we tighten it to a certain degree, we would like it to stay there because hopefully uh, that's where we want it. Uh, we don't want it to start uh, slipping and getting looser or some stay tighter and some loosen up. It's not ideal. So all of these things considered, um, it turns out that in my research, I only found uh, a couple of other non-natural rope solutions that I found uh, are suitable. So please check out my blog. Uh, it's all about Shima Daiko rope, and um, you can read much more in depth about the rope. I think it's a huge part of, of uh, Shima Daiko, especially when we're tightening very, very tightly on this size drum. If it's something else like a larger Okedo or Ojime Daiko, we don't need quite as fine-tuned control um, and performance from the rope, but I think it's quite crucial for a small rope, uh, small drum like this where we're trying to get control of, of it and tightening it quite tight in general. So um, so this one, in contrast to the other Hogaku Shime Daiko, it's all one rope and none of these are actually tightened, but, but um, the reason there's so much left here right now is because the first stage of the tate, I would tighten this with using a agebachi, and then the second stage, you would start to knot. On every every time there's a hole, you'd knot and pass the rope all the way through. Um, and that is what's time consuming, of course, doing that. But once we get all those knots in there, a lot of this extra material is gone. Um, generally, the first knot is a bowlin or some type of uh, variation on a bowlin. So uh, if you're not quite sure what to do, then you can just uh, look online or do some research and figure out a knot like a bowlin. Um, there's many, of course, lots of different philosophies and styles of uh, tying shime daiko or roping shime daiko, but I think bowlin is, uh, is pretty standard and I think it works really well. So generally what I do is I have the playing side, which is thicker. I tie the bowlin on that side and then I just go go in this direction, outside in. Um, so if your playing side is on top, then you would go this way, right. And then the reason it's a bowline is because we want this little loop. And then once we're done threading, we pull it through, and then we will start to, to do the knotting. So uh, it, this video is too short for going through all the knots and the whole system, but basically, Basically, there's two ways of, of doing it, the two-person method and the one-person method. Two-person method, you can just go through and do it. The one-person method, you need a locking knot, so you need it to pass through in a different kind of way. So uh, that's something that if you're interested in learning more about, then um, I'm sure there are uh, various teachers out there who are, are teaching it. Uh, I have my own one-person method that uh, I learned from uh, Kyosuke Suzuki-sensei uh, using a uh, wooden mallet.
and using it as leverage. So if you're more interested about that, please contact me and I'd be happy to, to help you out and, and teach it to you. So um, the final thing is once you're done tightening the whole thing, um, there's a difference maybe in styles or different opinions about how many times the final rope should go around. And uh, for me, my preference, and uh, as well as Wakayama Shachu and many other groups I've seen, like to go around three total times at the end and tie it off. So that's where you would um, cut the rope off, is once you're able to get three, after you do the, all the tying and the excess rope, you want it to go around three times and then tie it around the original spot. Um, so I've seen different uh, numbers of times, of course. I've seen two, which is quite common. Uh, two or one. I've seen kodo and other uh, kodo style groups use less than three, but but uh, four looks not too good, and also four is not the best number for Japanese culture. Uh, I think that's just too much rope. Somehow two, one definitely looks too empty. Two, uh, two times around, still to me looks kind of empty, and there's something about the Number two, that doesn't quite seem, it's like the martini olive rule that I've heard before, uh, where you ask how many olives should go in a martini. Well, it should be an odd number, and one is too few. So it only gives us one choice, really, because five, is, of course, is too many. I kind of think of, it, think of it like that. Somehow two doesn't seem quite aesthetically pleasing enough. And I'm not sure why... Um, you know, various cultures might use, uh, drumming cultures or shimedaiko uh, cultures in Japan might use different times around. Uh, I think some places it just might be like whatever's there is there and they don't think about it and other places will think more about the aesthetics of how many times. So I always, the first time I tighten it, I tighten it like just like I'm going to play it and then I'll make sure to have excess rope so that I can choose uh, where exactly I want it. So I'll make sure I can go three times around cut it off, and then always have three. Um, by the way, that the final wraparound after it's all done should be nice and tight so that it helps hold that tension at the end. So it's not only for decoration, it does uh, serve a function of keeping it tight. Um, it's like a, another insurance of making sure that it can remain tight after you uh, tighten it, finish it up, and you start playing on it. The idea is that you want it to not stretch and loosen up as you're playing, of course. Finally, this is the Edobayashi style shime daiko that's made by Miyamoto Unosuke Shoten. And it's basically just like the, the previous one I showed, except it's higher grade materials and a little bit more attention to detail and of course the beautiful lacquer uh, which is also on the hogaku style this uh it's called janome snake eye black lacquer it uh, just signifies that it's for a certain purpose and that's what it's built for so this rope um this rope is a synthetic one called kuremona which is one of the one of the good ropes that i found um, I think there's probably different grades of kuremona, but um, I think in general that's that's what's sold in Japan by taiko stores or taiko makers as a good one of the good synthetic ropes. So uh, that's on my my blog talking about shime daiko rope. But uh, once again, um, there is a thicker side and a thinner side. So when I first threaded this rope. I figured out which side of the thicker side, which is this side. I put a bowl in knot here, and then I threaded it um, same way we were just talking about earlier. So pretty much the same same method of tightening um, with this with this kind of style. If the rope is too small for the drum, then it would stretch and you might not be able to pull it as tight. In some cases, it might break when you're trying to pull. Uh, very large drums together or skins together on a large drum so the bigger size drum this is a this is a number two taiko nicho gake um, they go up as high as five fa gocho gake in which case the skins are very thick 
and the body is uh, deeper. And in those cases, you have more ability to be able to really pull that drum tight. And a rope like this, I think this is about a nine millimeter uh, rope, may not hold up. They might stretch or it might break in the in the during tightening for something like that. So, of course, we need to adapt the rope. The first hogaku uh, rope is also quite a bit thinner than this because, again, it doesn't need to be tightened quite as much. So we have to think about all these different things working in tandem um, so that we get the best result when we're working with shime daiko. Uh, one last thing would be one common thing that can happen with shime daiko over time is the clamshelling effect, meaning that one side would be uh, tight, more tightly pulled and one side ends up being less tightly pulled and then eventually the head kind of has that wear pattern and even if you don't have it tightened it just sits with this uneven shape. So that's something that should be just um, avoided right from the beginning and if it if it happens then you can always move the bowl and knot to the other side and try to correct that. But there is some technique in trying to avoid the clamshelling and trying to make sure Every single time you tighten, um, it's even, and double check with, with visual, uh, feeling the tightness with your hands, and also mm. listening to the sound. And if you do that right from the beginning, and just try to be very conscious of uh, avoiding uneven tightening, then it should, should not be a problem. But that's something that can be difficult, especially if you have rope that's not ideal, then you have slippage and... Uh, less control, and you have a bigger chance of, of clamshelling or having other issues over time. So it's kind of a deep topic, uh, just talking about this kind of instrument. There's a lot that goes into it, but uh, yeah, that's a little bit of introduction about how I think about Shime Daiko and, and uh, some of the parts that are involved. So anyway, that was Shime Daiko. I'll see you on the next one.